Hey guys, welcome to Herding Little Cows. We are making breakfast this morning. We are making some apple muffins. Um, if you hear some noise in the background, we have a, another little baby joining the family today as we um, watch her because there was a big care cancellation. So we are making the, it's the blueberry muffin recipe from the Betty Crocker cookbook, except I'm doing a variation of it. So I'm using the regular ingredients, except I'm doing water instead of milk. So three quarters of a cup of water for each recipe. I'm doing two, so that's one and a half cups. We're gonna do half a cup of vegetable oil. That's the double recipe. So I'm giving you the double recipe thing. So two eggs, which I had already cracked into the bowl. We will mix those up. Last night in this bowl, I put together four cups of flour, one cup of sugar, four teaspoons of baking powder, and one teaspoon of salt. Now I'm going to add just three of the gala apples that I had. I'm going to add those. They're just all chopped. I think they're chopped, but if you saw me cutting them when we started, started the video because I thought I had chopped them all and I found two I had. We're also going to add some cinnamon. I don't measure. If you've seen my videos before, you'll see that that's common. <laughs> um, and so I'm just gonna add cinnamon to the dry ingredients. Put a little vegetable oil before I spill it because that would be really a mess. So then we're just gonna combine the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients. We make this recipe often. Sometimes we use banana. There's a banana variation in here. We'll use blueberries, we'll use apples. Um, we do quick breads of different kinds a lot. So. With muffins, the trick is you do not want to over mix them. So you don't, you wanna wait until everything just gets moistened and then you wanna stop mixing. We, are doing water today. I would normally do milk, um, but because of the low spend challenge, I'm trying to save the milk for other ingredients that it's more necessary for. And I saw that it works well for this. These muffins will all be eaten this morning. Um, it might not last as long as it would with milk, like be as soft and fluffy as it would with milk if I was doing um, muffins that were going to stay for days, but we're gonna cook these and eat them right now. So. I want to say thank you to all the people who have been watching the videos and subscribing recently. Um, I didn't know that so many people wanted to know how to do a low spend challenge. Um, we have enjoyed, I've enjoyed other low spend challenges that I've seen, um, like Amanda Beal at the Fundamental Home and uh, Frugal Fit Mom just did one recently that was very low spend. It was like $30 for six people. Um, my challenge, I wanted to make sure we got fruits and vegetables, and I wanted to make sure that it was food my family wasn't going to be disappointed at the end of the week, like, oh, we didn't eat anything that we could. So, I'm going to get out the pan. homestead on YouTube and the only difference to this was 
I, for what our recipe is, we would normally make four loaves. I made two loaves, so I have the recipe. That would have called for three teaspoons of yeast, but if any of you know, yeast is the expensive part of bread making. So I went and found a low, a low yeast solution. And so I only did one teaspoon of yeast for six cups of flour, about six cups of flour. It ended up being just a little bit more. And so this then rose overnight. So I made this at about eight o'clock last night and it's risen about 11 hours. So now I'm just going to form it. Just kind of push out any air bubbles. I did all the kneading last night, but I'm just pushing out air bubbles so we don't have any. Um, what I was seeing of the recipe is that, I mean about the low yeast, is it gives it more time to develop the flavor. So it's gonna taste different than regular yeast bread where you have the really yeasty um, kind of alcoholic smell. But it smells okay. We'll see how it comes out. So I'm just going to lay it on our bread, our pizza stone and let it rise here. You could also do this in a loaf pan. I'm choosing to do it um, on the pizza stone this time. And this will be our bread for snacks later in the day. I'll tell you, I don't know exactly how long it's gonna to take to do the second rise, so I'm gonna leave it here on the counter. It is 10 minutes of seven, and we will come back and see when these are about done. Thanks. So we got these out of the oven. They cooked at 400 for about 25 minutes, I think. We checked the middles to make sure they were cooked, and so we are gonna serve these to the family. When we do things like this, we just use paper towels so that we don't have to wash as many dishes afterwards. The kids can use them for napkins on their face and everything like that. So this breakfast, um, this pan of food will probably be gone. The kids will keep asking for, left, for more until it's all done. That's just how they are. So we'll see you at lunchtime. Hey guys, welcome to Herding Little Cows, or welcome back. So earlier you saw me make the bread. I put the two loaves on here and now it has about doubled in size. We put it on a pizza stone and we are about to put this in the oven. Um, if you missed it earlier, this is a low yeast bread, so it rose all night long. And then we put it on this pizza stone at seven, uh, 10 minutes of seven this morning, and it is now 9.30. So it's been on the pizza stone for two and a half hours. Um, so it's now doubled in size. We're gonna put it in and we'll show you what it looks like when it comes out. so we will see when it's ready to come out of the oven. <laughs> okay, the bread's been in the oven for 50 minutes. We've been doing school, if you can see by the mess. This is real life here in the house. This is our little baby over there. Virginia's with the other baby. I said in a different video about a daycare closing or something. We do not have a daycare. We have a friend whose daughter goes to daycare and she is with us today because of the daycare closing. So, um, she's in the other room though. But, we, um, we don't run a daycare. If you're new to this channel, it's myself, my husband, children in the house, seven of them, ages 16, 12, 10, seven, four, two, and four months. And my mom who joins us for some meals. She lives in a house in the backyard. She has a small house. Um, so that's our family. In case you're new to the channel, thank you for joining us. So the bread's been in the oven for 50 minutes. This is the low yeast bread that we made. And it looks really, really good. A tip that we use, not even just during the low spin challenge, but if you are serving hot bread or bread that you've toasted so it's still warm out of the toaster, you can take the stick of butter, just open like this, and you can rub it on the hot bread, and you still get butter on your bread, but it's not as much as if you let your kids use a knife and smear the butter all over the bread. So just a money saving tip. So join us in a little bit for lunch. So Abigail, what are you doing? So I making the jelly and greens, and this is for lunch, and to this is family's bowl, and I'm making it. Very good. So in the beans, do you remember what we put in the beans? Cheese, Creole seasoning. Creole seasoning. And they're pinto beans. Yeah. And there's, what else in them? Onion. Onion. And onion and garlic and kielbasa. That's Josiah's bowl. That's Josiah's bowl. Samuel's. Samuel's. Samuel's bowl. Okay, 
go ahead. You're going to take your rice in another bowl? Whose bowl is this? This is Naomi's bowl. It's Naomi's bowl. Okay, go ahead. Oh. Don't fling rice everywhere. That'd be a problem. Yeah, that would be a problem. So, for people that were watching the video, I don't know where it went. Here it is. We made bread before, and it came out of the oven. There were two full loaves there, and it didn't last very long. So they would have eaten more, but I stopped them because we were gonna have lunch. It almost fell over. Whoa! Okay, whose bowl is that? This is Good job. So we're gonna serve everyone lunch. It takes a little longer when you have the little ones in the kitchen with you, but they're excited to help. So we'll see you later. So yesterday we cooked chicken leg quarters that we had for our lunch. You saw that yesterday. And I put the chicken leg quarters in the pan and said, oh, well, if you want to see how I did this, go look at my chicken stock recipe. I don't have a chicken stock recipe. Sorry about that. I did turkey broth one time. So it's very similar to that, but I will tell you what I did for this. So I took the chicken leg quarters that we had cooked. The only thing on them was salt and pepper because of the low cost week. Um, sometimes I would put other things on, but I'm going to explain how I did it yesterday. Chicken leg quarters had salt and pepper. They cooked the full amount of time. I pulled them out and pulled all the meat off of them. I put all of the meat, skin, bones, I'm sorry, skin, bones, fat, all those pieces back into the crock pot with the drippings that had been from the chicken. The crock pot, it's a roaster. They had been with the chicken, the drippings that were in there. And I added water to close to the top. I added the carrot ends and the ends of a celery stalk and an entire onion into the pan. There's lots of other things you can add, other things that I add when we're not doing low spin, but that was all that got added to this pot. So that cooked for 24 hours at, I think, 325. Um, I love my countertop roaster because I don't have to use my oven to um, cook things. This costs a lot less money to do it this way, and it makes really, really great broth. I also like it because at Thanksgiving time, you can cook a turkey in it and keep your oven available for the pies and all the other stuff you want to make for Thanksgiving. So we will be using this broth to make soup over the next several days. Um, if you're new to this challenge, we're doing a seven-day challenge, $75. And yesterday, we did not have soup, but the rest six days of the week, we are going to have soup. So later on tonight, you will see that I'm going to make some homemade noodles. We will also use this same soup recipe to make um, variations of chicken soup for the rest of the week. So just to answer some questions for people who are new to the channel, um, I'm a stay-at-home mom. We have the seven kids at home, and currently four of them, counting, yes, Four of them are homeschooling through the state of Maine. I'm following all the regulations the state of Maine has. And because of the ages, there's only four currently um, enrolled through the school system. But that means that I have three littles that are sitting around when we do our schoolwork. So you saw the mess of that on the table earlier. They are home with me all the time, um, including the almost 17 year old. She you know, went out to do her driver's ed last year, but other than that, she doesn't do any classes outside the house or anything. Um, we have friends that do, just we don't have anyone currently doing that. So everyone is home for every breakfast, lunch, supper, and snack. Oh, I forgot to mention my husband. My husband is home all the time um, with a neurological condition, kind of like seizures, but not. And we actually have an appointment next week, two weeks from now, to try to figure out a new diagnosis for that, to see a new doctor. But that definitely... Um, is a change from most people in that I have a husband who's here eating our meals with us. I don't pack lunches for him. I don't have to prepare that in any way. So a little bit about our family. We are um, Christians and that is why we do most of what we do. Um, we read the Bible and try to obey it um, as we can. Um, we try not to make excuses for what our society looks like to decide what we should obey in the Bible or not. We do, if we read something in the Bible, we try to obey it. So, why we homeschool, why we run our family the way we do, all of that is based on our reading of the scriptures. Um, 
It's something that we have to reevaluate regularly to make sure that we are doing all of that. We're just grabbing another bowl. So a lot of super rough and no more rooms. So we um, regularly reevaluate our the shows we're watching pleasing to God. Is the music we're listening to pleasing to God? The books we're reading. And then even the why behind what we're doing. Are we teaching our kids so that we can get them into Harvard? Or are we teaching our kids so that we can give them a good basis of who the God is and what the Bible teaches? Um, oh, we have a little one coming out of the room. Um, when I do these videos, um, the kids are usually in another room doing um, schoolwork or playing games or whatever. Today they're watching Torchlighters, which is a cartoon um, video series about some heroes of the faith. Um, usually, most of them are about people who are martyred for their faith. The one they're watching right now is William Booth, um, who has an interesting story about starting the Salvation Army. But anyway, um, back to why we do what we do. We um, try to make sure everything we're doing in life is to glorify God. And the reason that I try to save the money in the way that we do is so that we can use our money um, in ways that will help other people, will help um, advance his kingdom. And if I can save money for our family by taking time to make the chicken stock, taking time to make the bread, and that gives us resources to be able to help other people um, and to be able to get the gospel up, then we'll do that. Um, we as a family go out handing out tracts and doing open air ministry. So that involves travel sometimes, that involves buying the tracts and things like that. So that is why I'm about saving money. Also, because my husband has been out of work now for two and a half years, um, the money coming into the household is very limited. So I only have so much to work with. Um, when my husband and I first got married, we started having these issues. And the doctors didn't know what was wrong. And we were living on very, very little money, which was very different from how I grew up. Mark, can I have your hand, you for a second, to just lift up one side so I can the rest of the room. So, um, so Mark has spent different years being out of work. Um, probably about half of our married life now has not been employed. And so and three and a half years in full time ministry. Yep, three and a half years in full time ministry. So definitely God has used these different challenges in our lives to teach us different things. And one of the things he's taught us is that we don't need to live by what people would consider the American dream of the big house and the brand new cars and all of that. This house that we're living in um, was my mom and dad's house. And when my dad passed away, my mom decided it was too big and asked us to come live here. We lived with her for three, a little over three years before she decided to make herself a small house in the backyard. So she had a little more space and we worked together um, taking care of the houses. Mark does a lot of the handyman work and, well, not a lot of the handyman work. Mark does some of the handyman work. Ooh, when things he I can still do. Think through what needs to be done. And... My, I make most of the meals. My mom comes over to have dinner with us most nights. So it's very much a symbiotic relationship. Um, and we love having grandma so close. And we have a 15 passenger van that we bought used from somebody here local in the area. Um, we don't have the latest greatest clothes or any of that, but we have exactly what we need because God has provided for us. So I hope these videos are a benefit to all of you guys who are watching. Um, for whatever reason it is that you're trying to save money for your family, I hope that you can get some tips from here. And please leave tips in the comments of this video or on Facebook for us. Um, that's all I do for the broth. I'm going to throw out these pieces. And now this will be used for soup over the next um, six days as we make a meal every day of soup. So, hope you enjoyed that. If you have more questions you'd like me to answer one of these videos, please leave that in the comments also. So, see you at some time. Hey guys, we're going to be making some two-ingredient um, banana cookies for snack today on our low spend week. So you can find this recipe online if you look up um, banana two-ingredient banana cookies, 
and we're, there's different variations. We're going to be adding cinnamon to ours today. So first, I'm going to start off by just mashing these two bananas here. Um, the kids really enjoy these cookies, and they don't need to feel bad about eating a ton of them because they don't have any added sugar besides bananas. So, yeah, we like to add, if we're not on the low spend, we add chocolate chips. You can add um, peanut butter and coconut and cinnamon. Um, you know, do you have anything else you like to add? You could add raisins to them. Um, cranberries, but I prefer chocolate chips. But that's me because I have chocolate. Um, so, you can use a potato masher to mash the banana. I chose to use fork today. Um, these cookies are also nice for cooking with people with allergies because they're dairy free. You can make them gluten free if you use gluten free oats, depending on how allergic the person is to gluten. Um, there's no eggs in them, and you can make them sugar free. So they're nice to have when cooking for people with allergies. And they're a good sweet treat. And the kids can make these quite easily mashing with bananas and such. You can grind up the oatmeal if you don't want it as big, but I'm just going to be using regular rolled oats today. You can use quick oats too. So. And the oven is preheated. <laughs> so I'm just going to finish mashing these real quick and then add the oats and cinnamon. So it's two bananas to two cups of oatmeal. So I've got a third of a cup here. There we go. And then again, we don't really measure, so just some cinnamon to taste. Um, so these are also quick to mix up. They take about 9 to 12 minutes to cook. Um, and again, based on your oven, that might vary a few minutes. Um, but just until the cookies are set. Let's finish mixing these up. And then, I'm not sure if you're supposed to use a greased pan. I just put parchment paper down, so that's easier. Even if a pan doesn't need to be greased, it makes cleanup easier. At least. So, let's finish mixing these. This is going to be our afternoon snack for today. It's Tuesday, so day two of the frugal food challenge, $75, and then we have bread that we can eat later tonight after dinner before we put the littles to bed. So, once this is all blended, put it on top. So it says large tablespoonfuls. But as long as you're watching them in the oven, I don't think it matters too much about exactly what size they are. I'm one who doesn't use timers, so I just look at things. Um, it's harder to give recipes that way, I know, because one time I wanted to give out our bread recipe, but I didn't know how long we cooked it because I always watched it. Um, to see when it was done. So I had to make a batch of bread to time how long I cooked it. But I really didn't know. So hope this goes together well. And there are variations to this recipe. Um, but this is just one way that works. You are you looking forward to cookies? Do you want cookies? Yeah. Yeah? What do you like to have in your cookie? What do you like? Do you like chocolate chips? Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to do that today. But maybe some other time, okay? What's been your favorite meal? Do you like the beans and rice, or the oatmeal, or the muffins? What do you like? Or the bread? <laughs> cookies, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to put these, finish putting these on and throw them in the oven, and then we'll show you when they come out.
So Virginia made the banana cookies for you. She told you she's not very good at timers. So she looked at the clock just now and said, they've been in for like 11 minutes. So they looked done to me. She ended up using her hand to kind of form them the rest of the way because they weren't sticking together very well. But these are the banana cookies. And they're really, really yummy. But they're too hot to eat. So that's going to be our afternoon snack. We'll see you at supper time. Okay, so we hear some grumpy kids in the background. We're filling them down with the game. But they were just running around the house playing um, hide and seek. And so sometimes it takes kids a little bit to relax. So we are making um, chicken and noodles tonight. Chicken soup with homemade noodles in it. So first I'm cutting up the vegetables I will need. And when I made the broth earlier, we strained it and came up with about 12 quarts of broth. And we put away nine and a half quarts, I think, yep. into the freezer, just because that was the containers we had. Um, our family likes yogurt, and so we buy 32 ounce containers of yogurt at the store, and I save those to be able to store stuff in. So we store leftovers from the week, like if we have leftover taco meat or whatever, we'll store it in there. And then I also use it to store broth because I can freeze them. Um, the thing about the yogurt containers that I like is they're supposed to be thrown away. So when I put something yucky in them, like chicken broth, that's just really messy, I throw them away after I'm done. So what I'll do is I make a chicken or a turkey about once a week, and we make broth with it, but we don't use all that broth that week. So they go in the freezer, and then I can throw them away when they come out throw away the container after I pick it up. So we are making soup for this low spin challenge for tonight and the next five nights, so six nights all together. So I need to take about a sixth of my celery to make the soup for tonight. When I'm not doing the low spin challenge, we will make um, a pot of soup and we'll eat it for two meals. But because I want to make sure that this spreads, I'm making one night's worth at a time. And especially with tonight's because for tonight's meal, we're putting um, homemade noodles in it. And if you have leftovers, they don't reheat very well. The um, broth gets really starchy from the noodles. So I only wanted to make one meal's worth um, tonight. So because I know that I'm making this for six nights in a row, every night I will use onion, garlic, um, celery, and carrots. And the celery does not have another use, and the carrots are just going to be um, snacking other than what for the soup. So I just want to make sure that I'm not using too much of my stock too early in the week, but still make sure everyone's fed. I will let you guys know if we get partway through the week and suddenly my family's hungry and we have no more food left. So, almost done with the story. So, I'm going to do this and I will figure out how many carrots I need. Hold on a second. Sorry, that's probably very loud on the video how loud I'm cutting, but it is what it is. Celery going in. We have about two, two and a half quarts of stock in there. And I'm going to take about, let's see, one, two, three. I'm going to take about three carrots. I'm going to cut these up and we'll show you how to make the noodles in a minute the soup on that you saw me put the carrot, celery, and onion in. We're going to add garlic. I don't measure, so we're going to add about that much garlic to the pan. I have it turned on high. Once it gets to a boil, we will turn it down to medium, medium low, depending on how your stove cooks. And we're going to let that simmer. Once we make the noodles, they'll get thrown into the boiling pot. So, Okay, so we're making homemade noodles. I'm probably gonna have flour all over here by the time this is done because I just realized I don't have to move on anywhere. But we have one cup of flour. Is this exciting? So exciting. We have one egg. I've seen this recipe online. I don't know exactly where I got it from the first time. But then, can you open the milk for me? Yeah. Bonus hands. Extra hands, please. Yeah, I forgot. 
Then you take the eggshell, one half of the eggshell, and you put that much milk in. It's a precise measurement. Precise. That was the recipe I, was, I thought. So, and then you mix it up. You add just a little flour at a time while you mix up your stuff. So, I will just keep mixing. Sorry, Mark, I couldn't reach the trash can. He's excited. He likes it. He likes it. So we are going to make some egg noodles to go with our soup, which is cooking. And this is a messy process, and that is okay. Cooking is allowed to be messy. That's why it's good to have kids in the kitchen a lot. I don't, because these videos, we would get very, very loud. But So you get it into a dough-ish, and then you're going to spread it on the counter. Some people mix it directly on the counter. I don't do that, though. You can. So I'm going to take the dough pieces and just kind of um, knead them, but you don't want to work it too much, but you do want to make sure it is nice and dry. It's still sticky at this point, so you're kneading in more dough. Mark's going to keep taking this stuff away. <laughs> So I don't really know exactly how to explain this. This is only like the fifth or sixth time I've ever made homemade noodles. So this is not some expert teaching you how to do these. So this is like, I don't know, it's not sticky, but you can tell it's still moist in the middle. It doesn't have too much flour. I don't know how to explain it, but I'm going to spread out the flour. And we'll add more as we need to, but we're gonna spread this really, really thin. You want to make sure that you have enough flour under your dough so that when you go to make your noodles, they're not stuck to the counter. And that probably is really loud squeaking on there. I'm sorry. Um, but these noodles are going to um, be really sticky if you spread them really thin and then you don't have enough flour under them. So you just keep moving it and adding more flour to the bottom. The flour, if extra flour gets in the soup when you put the noodles in, all it does is thicken the broth. It doesn't um, ruin the soup at all to have extra flour in there. So, I mean, you wouldn't want to just like dump a cup of flour in there, but extra flour on the bottom is fine. So I am making these right before our meal. I told you that I had the soup on over there to boil. So I will make these. They'll sit on the counter for... I don't know, five or ten minutes till they're ready to throw in the soup. You just want to make sure all your vegetables are cooked when you throw them in. But you can make these prior to your meal and then um, dry them. So people make drying racks, which is like a dowel with little dowels sticking off of it, and you hang all your noodles and all of that. I don't have time for that. Um, it's just a lot of work. Some people do. I just do. This is one of the noodles we're making. And so after you get it spread really thin, it doesn't have to look pretty. They're all going to bulk up once you put them in. The key, the key, the key, the key is to have it really, really thin because they will bulk. So if you have this at like, I don't know, this is like a little less than paper thin. I mean, a little more than paper thin. But if you had it at like a quarter of an inch, you'd have these big, thick noodles that would take a long time to cook through. So after you get it cut to whatever, um, size, uh, every, whatever thickness you want, you're just going to cut them. And you can cut them any shape you want, any size you want. I choose to make them um, fairly thick because these will thicken up like I said, but then I'm going to cut them um, small because I don't want to have to cut them up for my little kids once I put them in the bowls. So you'll see. It'll depend. You can also make them into like squares like that if you wanted to have big thick pieces of pasta but that is not what I want to make. You can also just leave them long like this so you could use them as like spaghetti or fettuccine noodles 
and there's no real rhyme or reason how I'm cutting. I'm just trying to follow the line I made before. I know I'm curving because I was trying to get them all similar. Um, as long as they're fairly similar, they'll cook fine. I mean, you wouldn't want to leave a big piece. But. So then I'm going to cut them all about this size so that when the noodle comes out, a child can pick it up on their spoon without having to cut anything. Because in our house, we cut, you know, spaghetti noodles and things so the littles don't make quite as big of a mess of themselves. Um, tip for cutting spaghetti noodles, we keep a pair of kitchen scissors that's only used for food things, but then we use them to cut the spaghetti. So our pasta, our soup is boiling. So Mark, if you could turn that down to medium. And then what I do with the noodles is while I'm waiting to be able to put them in, and you'll see I'm very, very, it's dry, so it's not sticky, but I'm messy. Um, is I pull the noodles apart so that when I throw them in, they're all separate, just to make sure the lines got cut. Because I cut right on my counter, I don't want to cut too deep. I like I don't cut down hard, so sometimes they don't all quite come apart. So this is what I do while I wait to put it in. So we'll show you in a few minutes throwing it in the pasta. I mean into the broth, and then we will show you what a finished plate looks like. So these were the noodles. I just took them off the counter and put them in the bowl. And you wanted, you don't want to just dump the whole thing in because they could all stick together. So you're just going to sprinkle them in, but it's not a really fine task. You just don't want to do the whole batch at the same time. Oops. And then you're going to stir it and you're going to let them cook for, I don't know, five or six minutes. I'll check them and tell you exactly how long I cooked them for, but you want it to still be, um, bubbling. And as you can see, they're floating to the top right there. So see you in a minute. So this is one of the things I always forget. When I make chicken broth, I always forget to add chicken to the actual soup. So I remembered today. Um, that happens. Usually I make enough, you know, chicken that I'm like, oh, this will work for two meals. And then four meals later, we still have lots of chicken because I add, forget to add it to everything. So I added that, that just needs to warm up. That was fully cooked. But as you can see, the noodles are now cooked. It's been about um, seven minutes since we put those noodles in. And it was nice and rolling oil before. So I'm turning it off. And we are going to serve this soup. There's dinner tonight if anyone wants to join us. So wrap up of the day. It has been really busy around here. Um, I got a message last night from a friend asking if we could watch her baby. So we did that, which was a very fun experience. We also made apple muffins for breakfast. We had Brazilian beans and rice for lunch. We had banana cookies for snack. We made two loaves of low yeast bread and we made homemade noodles to go in our chicken soup. So it was a busy day. Um, you saw all the things so far that we have done and the only thing happening after this video is done is we're going to toast one of the loaves of bread and make cinnamon sugar bread for the kids for snack. So it's been, like I said, crazy busy day. If you watch these videos, you'll see a lot of prep work that goes into things, but like the bone broth that I made yesterday and then um, I, strained today in one of the videos. Um, that is something that now I have all the broth made for dinner for the next five nights, six nights, tonight and the other days. So it does, it all works out to not be as much work every day. The first couple days of this challenge is the most work. So I hope you join us tomorrow to see what else we're going to make.